On today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, yes, the Eagles are in a playoff game this week, but we're going to talk about our trust in head coach Nick Sirianni long term. Plus, how important would a win for the Eagles be on Monday night against the Buccaneers? All that and more on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Locked On Eagles podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use our code in all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. It's a Tuesday edition of the show. I'm Louis DiBiase, joined as always. He's back. It's Gino Camilleri. And Gino, aren't you so glad to be back talking about this football team? Just a great positive vibe right now after coming back from the CGS, uh, CGS All-Star game. Yeah, vibes were high until I'm sitting in the Dallas Love Airport and I'm yeah, surrounded that's right. by all of these Cowboys fans. And just won the just division. <laughs> sitting there. No, I, I luckily got out of Dallas before they won. Oh, thank God. I, okay, good. I, I was sitting there. I watched till halftime that I got on the plane and by then the game was over. And yeah, I'm happy to be talking about this team going into a playoff game that, man, they're three point favorites right now, according to FanDuel. I don't know how. It seems like a very trap line, in my opinion. Eagles on the road against a team they already beat in their home stadium. Tampa Bay, they can beat you on any given Sunday, this time Monday, with Mike Evans, who can beat you, Chris Godwin, who can beat you, a defense that is stout. Baker Mayfield never says die. And an Eagles team, which they are quite literally... All they say is die right now. (laughs) Roadkill. They are roadkill, man. They are that thing that you look on the side of the road, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a dead animal. That's the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Yeah, and it used to be a powerful animal, right? It's roadkill that was a strong animal, but not anymore. And that is the vibe, and that's what you're seeing on Eagles Twitter right now when you look at the media content and even the talking points on today's show that I was thinking about. It's, yeah, they have a playoff game on Monday, and we will get into it, of course, the importance of it and the keys. We've got a lot of shows still this week for everybody, but I'm still thinking about the long-term questions that I never thought I'd be asking this year. And, you know, that's been like the theme of social media the last few days is like, is Nick Sirianni the guy long-term? Because, again, yes, you have a playoff game this week, but I think the perspective has changed. Like, I don't think anybody is no longer expecting them to make a run, even if they get a win in this game, which, again, you said they're a three-point favorite. I'm even doubting they can get past Tampa Bay. If they get past Tampa Bay, do we really trust them to go to San Francisco and win that or go to Dallas or even Detroit and then get to an NFC title? Like, this team right now, they don't look capable at all of winning three to four road games, let alone one in the postseason. So we're asking the bigger questions, like when they get back to the 2022 Eagles, if they do that, is Nick Sirianni the head coach to get them back on that track? Because I don't think that's happening in 2023. And I think it's a very legitimate question after this six game stretch where they've lost five of six. And I think the main discussion point that you need to ask when it comes to Sirianni, right? Because we've been talking a lot about his in-game management, inability to call plays, inability to pick the right play caller and coordinators. Like This is all what goes into picking a head coach. But I think the main question everybody needs to ask when they're having these discussions should have to do with the quarterback. Do you trust Nick Sirianni with Jalen Hurts long-term? Do you trust Sirianni to have Hurts maintain the level of play he has the last two years? Do you trust him not to ruin Jalen Hurts? That, to me, Gino, is the main question that you need to ask. And if the answer is no, you need to find a new head coach. And even if the answer is not no, but it's you hesitate a little bit. That's a no to me, right? That's, that's a no to me. That's too much of, worth a risk I'm not willing to take. It's almost like the discussion around paying quarterbacks, right? And yeah. you take paying Jalen Hurts versus paying Daniel Jones. If there's a hesitation to even pay Daniel Jones, why did you pay him that Yeah, because money? then he's not the guy if you have any sort of hesitation. Not with those positions, head coach and quarterback. I totally agree. For how instrumental they are right. in keeping the whole ship afloat, Jalen Hurts isn't going anywhere. That contract is quite literally kicking in after this year. He is going nowhere, folks. He is on the books. He is attached to Howie Roseman. And if Nick Sirianni lays an egg in this playoff game, Lou, they will have lost six out of their last seven games mm-hmm. when they were 10-1. and one, 
and it'll feel incredibly reminiscent to that first stretch when he first got the head coaching job and they go two and five in that first beginning part of the season. And it seemed like the guys weren't buying in then similarly to the, how it feels now. Yeah. His message feels flat right now. It does. And whatever the guys say, I know they're doing it to protect the coach and to try and protect the vibe in the building, but seeing everything that has happened, the AJ Brown situation of just not talking in the media because he didn't want to say anything nice. And Jason Kelsey with that little spat on the sideline a few weeks ago with Nick Sariani and these little things that we were like, Oh, okay. That shouldn't be a big deal. It's a huge deal at this point. And there are so many things that are behind closed doors that we will not see at face value. But the ultimate question is moving forward after this week, who is going to be the guy that you trust with this football team football team? And the one guy that you have to make happier than anybody is your quarterback. And if Jalen Hurts is frustrated and doesn't believe in the system, which there was a game a couple weeks ago where he gets hit, he stands up and he looks at the sideline and he kind of shrugs like, I don't know if we have an answer here. And if that's going to be how it is moving forward, that can't be the case. You have to change things. It cannot be another 18-week season of poor offensive play, of Jalen Hurts starting to regress in an offense that just cannot keep up with the rest of the league. And heck, a defense that, I mean, the guy they put in charge, Sean Desai, he got kicked out and scapegoated for Matt Patricia, and neither of those moves worked. So do you trust Nick Sirianni at all? Because he was the guy who took accountability for that move. And I'm not even saying fire Sirianni next year, but the leash should be way tighter than it even was on Doug Peterson because, you know, I think they saw last, last time and it wasn't to me, it was more Howie Roseman. Carson Wentz was the reason Carson Wentz regressed, but it was also a lot of that had to do with mismanagement from Howie Roseman. But we saw the impact a GM and or a head coach can have on the improvement or regression of a franchise quarterback. And so to me, now you saw what happened with Carson and it was a slow regression and then it was a plummet, a massive one in 2020. The lease should be tighter this time so you can avoid that. And I don't think Jalen Hurts would ever regress to the level of Carson in 2020. That was an historic regression. But then again, I never thought Wentz would fall that flat after 2019. So we've seen crazy things. Jalen Hurts this year, to me, is still a really great quarterback, but he has regressed compared to 2022. I'm not willing to wait as long as they did last time before you see what happens. And, Mm -hmm. you know, even it's not just in Philly, like you're seeing this in Jacksonville again with Doug Peterson, the guy just won't let go of press Taylor. And it, I think it was a huge reason the Jaguars blew an eight and three start through 11 games and missed the playoffs. And Trevor Lawrence took a step back this year. So the impact of management and coaching is huge on a quarterback and they can carry you to a certain degree like Jalen has this year. But if you want the 2022 version of Jalen hurts, you need the coaches to be so much better than they were this year. And if you ask me right now, if I trust Sirianni to get Jalen back to that level, I don't. I don't trust him as a play caller. I don't pick, trust him to pick the right play caller. Right now, gun to my head, he'll probably, if he keeps his job next year, he's going to end up either keeping Brian Johnson or I could totally see him bringing in Frank Reich as the offensive coordinator, yeah. which is a very Sirianni or Doug Peterson-like move to do. And I just, yeah, my trust in him right now is kind of out the door. It just keeps going back to the former situations that we had in that it's crazy how second similar it is. season of Chip Kelly where he's like, he's off to this amazing start and they end up missing the playoffs. And Chip won, what, 27 games in yep. three years? That's a, that's an exorbitant amount of wins for a first-time NFL head coach. And guess what? He was fired. And do you think Jeffrey Lurie wouldn't be hesitant to do that again? Because the way point. I look at it, Lou, is if the football team is constructed to be offensive-minded – which was set in place by head by owner Jeffrey Lurie. And the quarterback just signed a multiple year extension that kicks in next year. His number one wide receiver, the quarterback is the godchild or godfather of his kid. Devontae Smith just got picked by Howie Roseman in the first round, and he's not going anywhere. The offensive line was constructed in Howie Roseman's image. They're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater with that one, Lou. Like Nick Sirianni, yeah. he's going to be the one to go. Is it easier to fire one head coach or replace an entire personnel grouping? That's a that great was point. Howie Roseman, who's yeah. Jeffrey Lurie's right-hand man. I, I just don't see it happening. He hasn't done it in mm-hmm. the past. He still trusts Howie Roseman. That's not going to change. And how he built that offense, if 
Nick Sirianni and company can't get it to work, they're going to bring in somebody else. I keep going yeah. back to the Formula One analogy. The drivers aren't going to change. They're going to bring in another team principal to try and get this thing back on track. Yeah, because this team is different. They don't hire and fire coaches in the same way as other teams. They don't have, again, you're right. Chip Kelly won 27 games in three years and he got fired after one, seven and nine season. Mm -hmm. Doug Peterson won this team, their first ever championship made the playoffs the following two years. And in some impossible circumstances that I think Doug had to overcome too, that weren't even his fault. One losing season, he's out the door. So yes, Nick Sirianni right now has the highest win percentage of any Eagles head coach ever <laughs> through three years. And he just made the Super Bowl last year and this year they won 11 games but that is not good enough it's still mm -hmm. like and it might sound crazy zoomed out but when you actually add context and look at the situations each and every one of them they made sense to a certain degree whether you agreed with it or not and i'm not saying they're gonna fire nick sirianni next year but i would not be surprised if they lose to tampa bay or even if they just get a win in the wild card round and get bounced badly in the divisional round I don't think he's safe. This Eagles team, again, they have a very high standard, and these coaches start really fast, but if they can't maintain, if they can't sustain that winning, like Doug couldn't and Chip Kelly couldn't, they're not going to have the Mike Tomlin-like grace period. They're just not going to get it. And does Jeffrey and Howie want to sit around and see the last year of Chip Kelly or see the last year of Doug Peterson? They can't afford it. Like you said, man, they invested too much in this offensive core. They invested too much to let that get ruined. And I always say that Howie Roseman, one of his great traits is that he's able to be proactive. And in those years where they held on to those guys for maybe a year too long, they were a bit reactive to go and then fire them. Would this be a situation where they are proactive? And this is the closest an NFL team comes, in my opinion, to how Premier League teams are like a Real Madrid or Barcelona. Like, that's the best of the best. And some of the best managers, you can win the Champions League. You can win your league. But if you follow it up by going in third place and you get bounced in the round of 16 in the Champions League, they're going to find somebody else because the expectation is they're competing for Super Bowls every single year, Lou. That's what Jeffrey Lurie wants. That's what Howie Roseman wants. And this is the window. The window is open. And why are we going to close the window when we know that this thing should be open for multiple years, it isn't like 2018, 2019, 2020 when the personnel wasn't there. Maybe on defense, right. things definitely have to change, but they have assets they can invest on that side. The offense isn't going to change. It sounds crazy, but I think Nick Sirianni getting fired after this year would be more justified than firing Doug Peterson after 2020. That's where I stand with that. How important would a win be on Monday in the wild card round for Sirianni and this Eagles team? We'll get into that coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Today's episode of Lockdown Eagles is brought to you by FanDuel, the NFL regular season. It's officially over. It's playoff time, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Are you going to place it on the Eagles right now? I'm not so sure. They're a three-point favorite heading into Tampa Bay on Monday night. Again, you're going to get 150 bucks back in bonus bets, win or lose. The FanDuel app, it's so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet. Like same live, same game parlays. You can find bets in their new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, all that and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup. Once again, it's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Guys, want to let you know, Lockdown, we've launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, Lockdown Sports Today. They're here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Eagles Buccaneers, the wild card round, going to be next Monday night, and Gino, I don't know, like the impact a playoff win, like what it would have on this team right now, I think it could do a lot for their confidence if they head into Tampa Bay and just demolish the Buccaneers if they put together a complete performance like they did the first time they saw this team in 2023. I think it could do a lot for their confidence and maybe instill some sort of belief that they can even get a divisional round win. But for me, when it comes to like the long-term view of this team, I don't think this game really matters at all when it comes to 
Nick Sirianni standing with the team as the long-term head coach with the current core because again you weren't even expected to be playing in this round and if you were you were expected to host a home game so going into Tampa and getting a win I don't know how much that does for you in the grand scheme of things I think the only way to change all these to silence these long-term questions that we have after this six-game stretch you're not gonna be able to do that I think until you get a convincing win in the divisional round and potential or you know take it like, let's say they go to San Fran and they barely lose in a really close game. That could change the narrative. But I don't know if what they do in Tampa Bay could really change that unless they just blow the doors off of that team and look like the team that we saw the first 11 weeks of the season. And this isn't the Tampa team that you played two years ago when you were a no. younger team. And or that... even the team you saw earlier this year, Gino. Oh, no, they've been playing much better. I mean, outside of that last week where they scored nine points, they've been Definitely the best team in the NFC South, which isn't saying a ton, but the Eagles, they weren't expecting to be on the road. You were expecting to have the one seed. We were looking after that Buffalo game at 10 and one. You're saying how many more wins until they lock up the one seed. They can rest their guys, get healthy to host two playoff games. And now it all changed. I think you realize who a team is after Thanksgiving. That's been Bill Belichick's famous quote forever. The Eagles showed us who they were, Lou. We... They got through some big time games where they were able to go through that gauntlet and they won those one score games. But then all of a sudden, those flaws, those little things that came creeping through the crack, it came back to bite them. And we lost the benefit of the doubt on Nick Sirianni. We're not trusting him to win this game. We shouldn't trust him to win the divisional game. If they somehow make it to the NFC Championship. I wouldn't trust him to win that game. But right now, how do those guys respond? I think it's more on the players that I want to see this weekend because if the guys are just out there and it doesn't look like they're trying and they're going through the motions, yeah, uh, there's a huge time referendum. Especially after what Dallas Goddard said, right, about them waiting for the playoffs. If they come out dead in the playoffs, that's, yeah. Yeah, very I mean, Coach Osinko said the same thing, that they're playing, yeah, they're playing possum. possum. Give me a but break. But if you're playing possum, you would have had the one seed locked up like four weeks ago, yeah, right? Be... Then that's the case. And yeah, I, you're I not going to wait that. When you're trying to get the one seed, you're not going to say, never mind, we don't want the one seed of the division. We're just going to wait until the postseason and be the five. That logic, I do not follow at all. No, we're not on the Pepe Silvia, always sunny. We're no. going to get the five seed so we could go on the road and hope one of Detroit or Dallas gets upset so that one of those teams could then go play San Francisco, who hopefully gets upset. No, 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 no. The Eagles, every time they've had the chance to control their own destiny, they've shot themselves in not just one foot, but both foot and the other hand that they were holding the gun with. Yeah. That's just who they are. And again, like they should, I still think probably should beat this Tampa Bay team, but the Eagles are one in five since the start of December, should right? The Cardinals should have beat Drew Locke. Right. That's the thing. I, I don't want to say should be anymore because yeah, we've been saying that for six weeks. Uh, this is from Jeff Kerr of CBS. The Eagles are one in five since the start of December. They've allowed 30.3 points per game. That's 31st in the NFL. The Buccaneers in December were five and one. They allowed just 16.3 points per game, which is second in the league. So yes, this is not you know, a great Buccaneers team. Like you said, they're the best of a bad division, but they're playing some really good football right now and they can throw the ball And against the Eagles. That's really all that's been needed to beat this football team lately. So it's going to be tough. It really is. This is not the same matchup as the one you saw earlier this year. And nothing's going to change in a week in practice. They're not going to overhaul the entire playbook. You're not playing possum. There's none of that. So you are going to see if they win, Lou, I believe it'll once again be the players winning in spite of the coaching staff. That's what I truly think it'll be. It'll be Darius Slay coming up with a big pick because he's back yeah. healthy all of a sudden. And A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith somehow are both in this football game and they could come up big. But I still don't think they're going to find answers to the blitz. I don't think they're going to no. find ways to change up their three pass concepts that they run out of those two by two sets that everybody knows is coming. They lack motion. They lack everything to be a top football team in the league to where I believe they're probably one of the bottom three teams in this playoff right now. Lou, It's insane that. You know, two years later, after going to Tampa Bay in the playoffs in the wild card round and getting destroyed by Tom Brady, and there were so many long term questions, it's crazy that two years later, especially after what happened last year, that I have more 2021 like questions for this football team than 2022. And that is, again, just it's shocking. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And that's why, like, how much longer you're going to wait if those that little sense of doubt creeps in. If there's doubt, 
there's questions. And when questions come, then comes the accountability element. And we saw with Doug, if he's not going to hold himself accountable and not move on from those coordinators, are we going to have a similar type of situation? I mean, man, losing six out of seven is such – that's incomprehensible for a team Considering that where they were. It might be the – I don't know what even is a good comparison. I've never seen a team that, yes, they had problems through 11 weeks, but a team that seemed like a Super Bowl or bust type of contender – to go so quickly into a team that looked like a bottom three team in the NFL in one year, in, in just a few weeks, they dropped off like that. I've never, and we've seen, you know, some crazy up and down Eagle seasons and some crazy mm -hmm. one year transitions, you know, 2019 even to 2020 or 2015 to 2016 and 2017. Yep. But in one year to see the difference of the 10 and one Eagles to the one and five Eagles of the last six games might be the most dramatic turn in NFL history. I don't know if I'm being a prisoner of the moment or if there are good comparisons, but this one is as dramatic as you'll ever see. Especially for the Eagles, I think it's, this is an all-time bad season. I mean, Jacksonville somehow did something worse where they didn't make the playoffs. Sure, yeah, they three, choked. But who cares? That's the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is the Eagles. Yeah. They have higher expectations. They have a higher standard. They were in the Super Bowl last year. We were lauding this team and giving them praise for – not having the Super Bowl hangover. Well, I don't know who started to get boozed up in the middle of the season, but it seems like that hungover kicked in in the beginning of December, and yeah. they're still trying to fight that thing off. I man. thought about this the other day. How much of it was this team was on top of the league at 10-1? and one. They knew they were playing the two big threats in the NFC in San Francisco and Dallas, and neither one of those games were competitive. I wonder how much that – took the wind out of their sails for the rest of the year. I think that played a bigger part mentally than people are talking about. Yeah. I mean, I, I said, it. I think San Fran broke them in that one game. I think they I, did I really like the way they man. If you had have lost those games close, it's different. They got manhandled in both. And again, those were the two contenders you had to beat. I think that killed their confidence. It almost feels like that picture you saw after the bills lost an arrowhead with the 13 seconds of stefan diggs and it felt like that team was broken until all of a sudden joe brady gave them a sense of rejuvenation and we're in the polar opposite timeline of what the buffalo bills were from two years ago if you look at it in that sense where you're sitting there and you were so hot for so long and then all of a sudden one sense of one ounce of adversity put this team i mean 20 feet under this team is a dead man walking they truly they truly are and it it stinks because we we've been the positivity pod and this i know really they're playing is, in the playoffs it feels like, like eulogy it feels like we are giving them a eulogy. i know we're previewing a playoff game and it's like we're just talking about how they're dead but how they stink yeah. i don't know how you can't talk about it in a different light i don't i mean i don't know how you can so what do the Eagles have to do, though, to get this win against Tampa Bay? Because they did put together one of the most complete games of the season against the Buccaneers earlier this year. Any way to take some of that tape and apply it to this game, we'll get into that coming up next right here on Lockdown Eagles. Today's episode of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It's just you against the numbers. All you have to do is pick two to six players. Say, are they going to have more or less than their Prize Picks projections? I, I'm going to say, shy away from the Philadelphia Eagles this upcoming week. But if you want to get in on some action where you can pick not just NFL games, but also NBA games. You could do some fun things like combining LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three points made and receptions. You also want to play along with some celebrities like Meek Mill and Andrew Schultz. You could do that right on their community plays tab. They also have a great future feature that is where a player will be rebooted if they get injured. So if they're out and they don't come back for the second half, that player will be rebooted. So to get in on the action today, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, Dan, daily fantasy sports made easy. Our Eagles fans, we're wrapping up this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. The Eagles take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the wild card round of the playoffs on Monday Night Football. And it really is crazy the last time you played Tampa Bay how different this football team is because, Gino, I think that was one of the most complete games they had put together all year. Like, the run defense was elite. They Probably the closest to a 60-minute football game. That yeah, they would it might back. be. Yeah. 
I mean, they had forced fumbles in that game, interceptions. Hurts played an incredible game. They ran the ball beautifully. I think they killed the final eight minutes of the game with one drive from DeAndre Swift. And to see who they are now, it's like, is there any hope they can put that kind of game together again? I'm not so sure. I do think if they're going to do it, though, when you look at the health of this offense, like you mentioned earlier in the show, and I totally agree, the stars of this team are going to have to carry you. We've been saying that for months, and they haven't been able to. If they're going to win, those stars have to wake back up. The issue is a lot of them are banged up. If Darius Slay plays, he would not have played in a month with that Mm -hmm. ankle surgery. Jalen Hurts has that finger injury. Devontae Smith is hurt. A.J. Brown's not going to be 100% if he plays. If they're going to do this, I really think they need the DeAndre Swift of that football game. I think they need to almost take a page out of the 2021 playbook and run the football. I think if they're going to have success at all in this playoff, Lou, it has to come through. Yeah. What is the most reliable, the most sustainable, the one thing that they can rely on no matter Regardless what? Regardless of who you want to be, right? It's what you're going to have to do. Let your offensive line yeah. take this thing and row the freaking boat, sure. man. I like agree. that, it, it really has to be, Lou, because if you're going to win, you're going to have to stop the other team from scoring points because mm-hmm. your defense stinks. How are you going to do that? You are going to have to have these massive drives to where if you look at Seattle, you look at Arizona, you look at the Giants, these game plans of teams that beat you, going back to 2022 with that first loss against Washington, where they held on to the ball two to your one time, 40 minutes to your 20. If you could do that against any team you're going to play off, play in the playoffs, Lou, that's how you're going to do it. And it's going to come at the hands of DeAndre Swift, where in that game against the Giants, the few moments of brightness that they did have were those explosive plays in the run game. And yep. between between Kenny and between DeAndre Swift, Jalen Hurts, I think it's like, dude, put it all out on the line, man. Just run like, the ball. This, it, yeah. Run the ball. Like that, It has to come through the ground yeah. because there's so many more positives that way, and it'll help open up the pass game. There okay. hasn't been that compliment. We talk about the compliment on defense, taking away the pass with having those guys being able to cover with the defensive line, being able to get home, but it's the same thing in the uh, offensive plan. If you can't run the ball, you're not going to be able to pass. If you can't pass, you're not going to be able to run. But what do the Eagles do best that I can still rely on? It's Hall of Famer Jason Kelsey, Hall of Famer Lane Johnson, multiple all pros there. And it just has to come down to one time, maybe call a good football game, Brian Johnson, and maybe something similar to that first game against Tampa. Yeah, they just need to get Tampa Bay to back up because you look at how teams, you know, I think it was Nick Bosa that Mm -hmm. said they – expose the blueprint to get after this Eagles offense. And I think that what that is, is blitzing them heavy because they don't have an answer for the blitz. You saw that with the giants last week. Mm -hmm. Well, Tampa Bay heads into this game with the third most blitz attempts in the entire NFL. And by the way, they're third in red zone defense this year. So this is a good unit. They're playing not just on offense, but on defense. So the key, I think Gino again is to run the football and let them let Tampa Bay just Get them to back up, and then I think that, like you said, will open up things for the passing game. With Jalen Hurts, yeah, no mm. no carefulness in this one. If you got to bail some clean pockets and pick up chunk plays with your legs, I don't care. Be the Again, Heisman. I don't want to be the Heisman for this game. Yeah, I don't want them to be the 2021 Eagles long term, but if that's who you got to be in this one to win a game, just, just do it. Yeah, no, I'm with you there, Lou. It's like, this is the time where you want Jalen Hurts to go and be Jalen Hurts. Yeah, no sliding. I I trust him way more than I trust the guys calling the plays because even if it's the wrong play call, I trust Jalen to go and make the play. But I want to add something on to being able to run the ball. The Eagles, we know that they aren't heavy in those short and intermediate areas in the pass game. If you want to open up the explosives, Gotta bring the guys down to the box. Make yep. Tampa Bay respect your running game. Something the Eagles haven't really been able to do. Why were they so successful in 2022, Lou? Because you had a combination of guys that were lethal behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, the combination of Kenny Gainwell and Boston Scott. If they can even do 75% of that, right. I, th- I think that's a game plan that you can win with. And you're going to have to try and get off the field on defense, but restrict those possessions for any team that you are playing, especially if you win this one, then you're going to have to go on the road and potentially play one of those offensive powerhouses. I think put that offensive game plan in. Now we're going to run this ball. 16 play drives would be great this game, Lou, but you have to bang in seven. It can't be three. No. You got to hit home. You got to be efficient in the red zone. You got to be efficient on the ground. Put your team ahead of the stick so those third and shorts – help you move down the field and take away the clock from the other team. 
Got three more shows for you this week covering Eagles, Buccaneers, and the wild card round of the 2023-2024 NFL playoffs right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. As always, thank you for downloading, thank you for watching and listening, and let's go Birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.